Tonight, top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Anti-Corruption Group Finds Fault with European Union EU study finds honeybees' death rates are lower than feared EU lawmakers back Lithuania's bid to join euro currency in 2015 and European Union vets foreign holdings in European airlines. Plus, Russia's South Stream pipeline in deep freeze as EU tightens sanctions noose. It's Friday, 25th of April. Glad you could join us. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Anti-corruption group finds fault with European Union. A prominent anti-corruption group on Thursday plans to report serious shortcomings in the management and governance of the European Union's core institutions as public confidence in Brussels remains at a low before elections next month. In a 250-page report, the group Transparency International recommends tightening regulation of lobbying, reducing conflicts of interest, enhancing protection for whistleblowers and curbing secret deal-making in sensitive policy areas like financial services. Weak enforcement of the existing rules means that corruption risks persist at the EU level the report warned, saying the risks contribute to public scepticism of the commitment of politicians and bureaucrats to a more open and ethical style of government. A series of prominent scandals in recent years have included the resignation of a European commissioner in the face of suspicions he knew about attempted bribery to soften anti-tobacco legislation and the prosecution of lawmakers for agreeing to large payments in exchange for proposing amendments at European Parliament. Now, of course, this highlights a critical structural problem in the makeup of the EU institutions, and one that breaks the democratic connection of operating in the interests of the people. It is the EU Commission that creates and drives the laws and directives, That commission is appointed and unelected by the people and cannot be removed by them. Now, whilst some would argue that they are voted upon by 670 plus MEPs in the Parliament, we would argue that for a large corporation or multinational company, funding campaigns and lobbying even 670 or more people is a small task that can easily be achieved if the aim is to create a more favourable economic climate for the corporation. Uh, This report is testimony to the fact that this indeed is what has been happening all along. It is for this reason that we get letters from small business owners like Peter Simmons, who's faced a £50,000 investment to have his ecologically friendly products recertified despite having done so less than half a dozen years earlier. Moves such as this destroy market competition and serve only to extend the reach of the corporate monopolies. EU study finds honeybees' death rates are lower than feared. A pioneering European Union survey into the impact of pests and diseases on honeybees found death rates were lower than feared, in part countering concerns about the collapse of colonies of the crop-pollinating insects. Now, the study of 32,000 bee colonies across 17 EU member states from late 2012 until summer 2013 found winter mortality rates ranged from 3.5% to 33.6%. Now, the winter of 2012-13 was particularly cold and the highest mortality rates were in the northern countries with harsher climates. During the beekeeping season, when the insects are active, mortality rates were between 0.3% and 13.6%. It's the first major study of pests and diseases that affect honeybees. A lot of it seems very encouraging, said Tom Breeze, a specialist in bees at the University of Reading in Britain. Breeze, however, was not involved in the study, which was made public by the European Commission on Monday. Now... Let me take you back one step to the previous story about the corporations driving policy in favour of themselves. 
As a regular viewer of the nightly news, you'll know that there has been much wrangling between Bayer and Syngenta and the EU. These two agri-pharma companies are trying to overturn a ruling by the EU which bans the use of their nicotinoid pesticides, which have been blamed for devastating the bee populations. And indeed, this article goes on to talk about that in brief. Now, I've notified our research team to keep a close eye for legislative reports seeking to review the ban on neonicotinoids and or anything to do with bees. Experience tells us with this positive report in hand, someone will be coming into the Commission, tabling an amendment, and we'll be watching. EU lawmakers back Lithuania's bid to join euro currency in 2015. European lawmakers endorsed Lithuania's bid to adopt the euro, with the ex-Soviet Republic scheduled to become the 19th member of the single currency next year. Approval by the European Parliament's Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee in Brussels today means Lithuania remains on course for final consent in July to join the bloc on January the 1st. The country is forecast to meet the single currency's membership criteria, which demonstrates the extraordinary determination of the Lithuanian government to adopt the euro as quickly as possible. Werner Langen, a German member who is spearheading the issue in the European Union. Lithuania would become the last of the three formerly Soviet Baltic states to become a euro member, after Estonia adopted the currency in 2011 and Latvia joined in January this year. Of course, this news will only add fuel to the fire, which is the economic barracking between the EU and Russia. And we have more news on the EU poking the bear with a sharp stick later in the show. EU vets foreign holdings in European airlines. The European Commission is examining several foreign holdings in European airlines, including Delta Airlines' stake in the UK's Virgin and Etihad's stake in Germany's Air Berlin, to see if they comply with rules for running an airline in Europe. A spokesman for the European Union Commissioner for Transport Policy, Sim Callas, said on Friday the Commission was also looking at Korean Air's stake in Czech Airlines and Chinese investment vehicle HNCA's 35% stake in freight carrier cargo looks. In order to obtain an operating license in the EU as a European airline, a carrier must be more than 50% owned and effectively controlled by an EU member state or EU citizens. It fascinates me how the EU seems to simply make up the rules as it goes along. It preaches free market dynamics whenever it wants to delude the populace into believing it's a democratic free market. It handcuffs nation states through the illegal state aid mechanism whenever it wants to restrict member states competing in said free marketplace. Uh, this article highlights another example of the same principle at work, as we saw with the investigations into Chinese investment into the nuclear reactor at Hinckley. This is not free market capitalism at work, it's some sort of pseudo-bureaucratic fascism. Now, whilst the EU on the one hand spouts on about recovery and growth, its actions speak louder than its words. Indeed, its actions speak of protectionism and capital control which are precisely the symptoms of a failing state, not those of one in recovery. Russia's South Stream pipeline in deep freeze as EU tightens sanctions noose. The European Union is close to freezing plans to complete the $50 billion South Stream gas pipeline through the Black Sea from Russia, the first serious EU action to punish the Kremlin for the seizure of Crimea. Key details emerged in a leaked briefing by the European Commission's chief, José Manuel Barroso, to Bulgarian politicians, warning the country not to stand in the way of the EU's tough new line on the project or attempt to undercut a unified EU response over Ukraine. We are telling Bulgaria to be very careful, he said, according to reports in Bulgaria's press. Mr. Barroso said there are people in Bulgaria who are agents of Russia, a reference to figures in the ruling Socialist Party who have been trying to clinch a bilateral deal with the Kremlin. <laughs> well, well, so they're not just surreptitiously prodding the Russian bear, they're openly digging it in the ribs. 
The article has the full details and I highly recommend you taking the time to take a look at it. Such sanctions of gas and fuel supply are doomed to backfire in a massive way. The EU already has the highest energy prices globally and here in the UK households are really feeling it. The EU has no control and little influence over supply price. You'll remember that we reported on the EU trying to take Gazprom to task in 2012, to which the response was, get stuffed. The EU has no credible alternative for energy supply, so Jose Barroso is cutting his nose off to spite his face. Of course, the mainstream media like CNBC and the BBC seem to be completely ignoring the Ukraine details. For example, the United States landing infantry troops into Poland via C-130 transports, Dutch and British Air Force jets challenging airspace approach by two Russian bombers only yesterday, and not a squeak on the beeb that I have seen. So, what's going on? Well, it's highly noteworthy that in November of last year, China stated it would be buying no more US Treasury bonds. The markets are being held in stability only by unbelievably low interest rates, and US and EU economies are now having to print money to buy their own bonds. Both the EU and the US find themselves with their pants round their ankles and their backs to the wall, neither one of them in a position to bargain. This is all bluff and bluster. As I mentioned earlier this week, well yes in fact you're quite right, that should read, as I have been prattling on in every episode of the Nightly News this week, we have added a help page to our resource section. Right now it has details about how to get up and running with a Google Plus account and details of how to try out the fabulous new Google Plus Hangouts video conferencing features. Well now we need your help. I've put together these help instructions, and being technical, then to me they make perfect sense and should be easy to follow. But where I need the help from you is to test them and see if they make sense to you. If you have questions or ideas on how we can improve them, or indeed if I have left you completely confused in a what is he going on about kind of way, then please can you email me and let me know. That way I can hopefully improve things. A link to my contact page and the help page in question is below. Thanks. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>